I have survived long enough for everyone else to wake up and for them to continue on their mission. Welcome to Sidetrack, your sci-fi TV and movie channel. If we get a new series of Stargate, which we will, we're getting a new series of Stargate. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that before, but we are. Would we get a conclusion to Stargate Universe? I'm hoping we would. Brad Wright always said that if we'd have got his version of the new Stargate, we would have done. But would Eli have survived long enough? Now, the destiny was actually left between galaxies. It had a two-year journey to complete to get to the next galaxy in the next star system where it could refuel. There were some massive power problems, and there was a pod that was broken. Eli had to stay awake while everyone else went into stasis for the two-year journey, and we just had to hope he would survive. But would he? Well, now, obviously, more than two years has gone by, so we can assume that the destiny has probably arrived at its destination and maybe improved its power systems, etc., got resources to repair itself. We can assume maybe that the pods have all woken up and the crew is awake, but will of Eli survive that journey? He had two years to survive, don't forget, with very limited resources, and the vessel was failing. Shields are failing, but keep up this acceleration. We're gonna lose hull integrity. Now would be a good time, Rock. I should just kept my mouth shut. Patience, Eli. So, what are the possibilities? One, easy one, he could have fixed the stasis pod. That would have helped, and that would have got him to where he was going. Now, Joseph Malozzi, who is one of the main creators behind Stargate Universe with Brad Wright, Robert Cooper, etc., has suggested that as one of the options. Maybe he did just fix the pod. It's a bit boring, a bit straightforward, but probably, well, logically, probably the most straightforward way to actually solve the problem. Another suggestion, actually, from Joseph was that he would maybe withdraw into one of the shuttle pods where it's warm and would be far easier to power, etc. He moves as many of the resources, food, water, etc. there as possible, and he survives there while waiting out the two-year journey. Not having enough food and becoming out buff. But, again, a very logical way of solving this problem. You limit the amount of power, etc. needed, and you preserve as many of your resources as possible in as small a location as possible. The smaller the location, though, the higher the risk if something was then to happen, because you've then got no sort of backup plan. Say the heating or the power fails in that section of the vessel, you're in real trouble. If you're new to the channel and you like the video, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification so you never miss any of our videos. But also, you can go to patreon.com forward slash sidetrack. Most of our videos premiere there first. So if you are desperate to see the next video as quickly as possible, go and check it out. Perhaps the SGC could have sent a resupply mission. Maybe we figured out a way of sending resources and food, etc. to the destiny. All we would need is a significant enough power source. We have things like the Asgard core of all knowledge. We have access to lots of ancient knowledge. Perhaps by the time, you know, even a year has gone by, we could have sent resources to the destiny. Obviously, that would be a one-way journey. Unless, within that one-way journey, you can send a power source through, powerful enough that you can actually then turn around and come back. I personally think that's unlikely, considering the ancients needed a power supply that was basically a bloody planet in order to generate enough energy to get to the destiny in the first place. So, probably, if the SGC were able to do this, it's a one-way trip. But it would leave Eli with enough resources to survive the two-year journey. And maybe even a couple of people would have gone with those resources, so he'd have someone to talk to. They could even send stasis pods through. So we've got that he just fixes the pod. We've got that he withdraws to a smaller place within the destiny, maybe a shuttle to survive. And we've got that maybe they send resources from the SGC that allow him to survive. But there are other options. We saw the planet builders towards the end of Stargate SGU. Maybe the planet builders, who obviously had had an interest in the destiny and obviously had an interest in the destiny's crew, would see what was happening and intervene. Perhaps they would arrive and save Eli and maybe even 
affect some repairs on the Destiny. After a million years in space and being attacked almost constantly during a big chunk of that time, she was in desperate need of some repairs. The planet builders, assuming even they are actually real, because we're not really certain, but they would have had the capability to actually make those repairs and save Eli and get the Destiny further along its journey. Also, in that process, we could have seen and maybe understood why the planet builders were so interested in the Destiny and her crew. We could have fleshed out that storyline. Something that Joseph Malozzi actually did talk about several times when talking about where he thought season three was going to go. But the planet builders were not the only aliens involved. There was the blue lot that were chasing the destiny, or even maybe the Lucian Alliance make another appearance. There were several species we got to see during Stargate Universe that most logically could have intervened here and maybe saved Eli and got him through those two years. There's also the Atlantis solution. Now, I, I'm just saying this a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but maybe there was a lab or an experiment somewhere running on the Destiny that could have saved the crew. Now, we got to see that quite a lot in Atlantis. They would open a door and that would be this week's adventure because whatever was through the door was obviously always left on, um, was always fully powered, etc., and was always generally incredibly dangerous. Maybe the ancients were just as stupid when it came to building the destiny and that there was something within the destiny that would allow Eli to then survive. Maybe he finds food replicators or something else, another type of technology that would allow him to carry on the journey. I actually think they didn't explore vast sections of that vessel because they couldn't. So something would have had to have changed for Eli to actually be able to do that. But it's always a possibility. And I do like the idea that Eli has to save himself. So either by repairing the pod or by searching the destiny and finding something to help save himself. I think that's a much more interesting way of doing this and really good for the development of the character. Because Eli Wallace was one of the most interesting characters in Stargate Universe. And I really would have enjoyed seeing not only him getting saved, but actually him saving himself. So guys, what do you think? Get into the comments. Would Eli have survived that two year journey? When all the pods opened and everybody woke up, would they have found Eli? Buff, as I say, going, hey, how you doing? Or would they have found him dead in a corner? Get into the comments and tell me exactly what you think. If you are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. It really helps us out and you'll never miss any of our new videos. Also, you can go to patreon.com forward slash sidetrack where most of our new videos do premiere first and you get to see them without the adverts, you lucky bunnies. As always, please stay safe and I'll see you next time.